Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Morning, Commissioner. Well, what uncivilized neck of the woods are you sending me to this time? Paris, Steve. Paris? Hey, I like that for a change. I could use a weekend in Paris. Forget it. This is no vacation. Steve, three days from now, a secret meeting on atomic inspections will be held in Paris. Each country is sending a representative with a report of his country's industrial potential. Lists of factories capable of atomic production. Well, what am I supposed to do? Go over there and count A-bombs? One of the Balkan countries sent a courier named Zabo to bring their report to Paris. Our legation was asked to keep it in a safe place. And an American named Blake was sent to meet Zabo. Mm, did Zabo arrive in Paris? Yes, he was seen getting off the plane carrying the officially sealed briefcase. He disappeared right after that. And Blake was killed. Sounds like somebody was real eager to get their hands on that report. Must be hot. That's the mystifying part, Steve. The Balkan country says mm. there was nothing sensational about it. Well, maybe there's something in it that's hotter than they realize. It's a possibility, but the point is the disappearance of that report has stirred up enough suspicion to sabotage that meeting three days from now. That's why you've got to get over there. Find Zabo and the briefcase and turn the briefcase over to our representative who's waiting at the legation so he can take it to that meeting. You've got just three days to do it in. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment, Steve. Good luck. And now, here is Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, that's what I like about my job. I've always got so much time to do things in three whole days, and all I had to do was fly a few thousand miles to Paris, solve Blake's murder, find a gent named Zabo in a city of just a few million, then turn his briefcase over to our representative to that secret meeting. A <laughs> real cinch. Well, Wednesday afternoon, I get to Paris. An hour later, I'm sitting in the office of Inspector Bravant of the French Surete. Oh, Monsieur Michel, a very mystifying case. We have been unable to find any trace of Zabo's whereabouts. You've got no leads at all? We have but one lead, Michel. She's in our way here now. She? Who is she? A girl named Sari Tedescu. Ah, Mademoiselle Tedescu. Please, have a seat. Thank you. I do not understand why you have brought me here, Inspector. I wish to ask you about a man named Zabo. Zabo? Mm-hmm. But I do not know any Zabo. You were on the same plane from the Balkans. You were observed to be quite friendly with him during the flight. I, I talked to several of the passengers, but I did not know their names. I see. And you are quite certain you do not know this, Zabo? I have just told you I did not. Please, Inspector, I do not see what right you have. Pardon me, mademoiselle, pardon me, That is all. You may go. Very well, Inspector. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Good day. Well, looks like you got a big hunk of nothing out of that, Bravant. She is lying, Mitchell. Hmm? When we searched Blake's apartment after the murder, we found this snapshot of Blake, Zabo, and Zari Tedescu. Oh. You know, I think I'll tag along after Sari, Inspector. I'll check with you later. I hurry outside and spot Sari on the sidewalk ahead of me. After about 15 minutes of fast walking, she ducks into a bar, La Petite Chienne. I wait a minute or two, and then I go inside, but Sari is nowhere in sight. Oui, monsieur. What will it be? Look, a girl just came in here a minute ago, bartender. What happened to her? A girl? <laughs> but many girls come in here, monsieur. Uh, would you perhaps like me to introduce you to... This her? one had long, dark hair. Her, her name is Sari Todescu, and I know she came in here. But, as you see, monsieur, there is no one answering that description here. That's the point. Where is she? But how would I know? I do not remember seeing this girl come in at all. I see. Well, thanks a lot, Mac. What? Monsieur, I am Anton. Perhaps you would like me to play a little tune just for you on my concertina. No, thanks. It would be pleasure. Look, some other time. You don't understand, monsieur. 
I specialize in playing tunes that people like to hear. Oh, so what tune do you think I'd like to hear? I overheard you asking about a girl named Sari. What do you know about her? A man in my position has ears and eyes open all the time in places such as this. Hmm. Well, skip the hocus pocus and let's have it. But, monsieur, I make my living playing tunes people wish to hear. I get it. Okay, here's ten bucks. Ten dollars American? Ten dollars American. Does that buy me the tune? <laughs> Not of course. Okay. Please to tug the bill in my pocket. Huh? Okay. Now, let's have it. This girl, Sari, was in here. Oh, great. Look, that I already know. Give me back my ten bucks. But wait, wait. I can't talk anymore now. I am supposed to be playing for customers. Meet me ten minutes past midnight, nearest metro station. Metro? What's that? Metropolitan. The underground electric railway. I will be waiting for you on the ramp. Okay, Anton. I'll see you then. And your tune better be good. I keep checking Sari's hotel all evening, but she's not in. It's a few minutes after midnight when I get to the subway station. I go down a long flight of metal stairs. I can hear a train approaching, but the ramp is dark and deserted. Except for a little guy at one end. It's Anton. He starts towards me, and then, as we're getting close to each other, a hand suddenly shoots out of the darkness and grabs one of my ankles. I lose my balance. The train is almost on top of me. I start falling onto the tracks right in front of it. Brother, that was close. Are you all right? I sure wouldn't have been if you hadn't grabbed me, Anton. The man who tripped you, there he goes, up the stairs. Yeah, come on, I'm going to get him. Uh, watch out, he has a gun. Get down. <laughs> You okay, Anton? Yes, yes, but, monsieur, if you are in trouble, perhaps we better forget our arrangement. Nothing I... doing. Now, look, what's this stuff you were going to tell me about Sari Tadescu? Well, it was just that I have seen her in bar, always talking to the same men. I heard Sari tell him that it was going to happen at 22 Rue Victoire Massé. What was going to happen? I don't know. That is all I heard. Oh. Hmm. 22 Rick Victor Massé? Uh, okay. How do I get there? Wait, you better take me. You paid me only for information. I am a very busy man. Okay, here's ten more bucks for you if you take me there. Oh? You mean ten dollars? Yeah, ten dollars American. Well, <laughs> that is slightly different matter. <laughs> Here we are. 22 Rue Victor Marseille. Monsieur Mitchell, door is unlocked. Yeah. Let's see if we can find the light switch, Anton. Yes, yes. He's here. Monsieur, look. Sitting in chair. Yeah. Well, he'll never get up out of that chair. That's a cinch. He's been strangled. Now, the second act of Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. He has been strangled? Goodbye. Come back here, Anton. Uh, monsieur, I told you I did not want to get mixed up in anything. Save it, will you? But who is this man? How should I know? Maybe there's something in his pockets that'll give us a... Yeah. <laughs> Here's his identification card. Zabo. This is man you have been looking for? Yeah. But I found him too late. The killer probably has the briefcase by now. Briefcase? What briefcase? Oh, skip it. I wonder if there's anything else in his pockets that might help. Here. I will raise him up and you can search his back pockets. It's quite heavy. Yeah. Hey, hey, watch out. I can't hold him. Oh, great. Now, look, pick him up and... Hey, wait a minute. What? Look, sticking out from under the seat cushion and back, that looks like a piece of leather. Here, let me get this cushion up. Well, what do you know? The briefcase. But I don't understand. If this man Zabo was killed because of briefcase, why did not killer take it with? Zabo must have been sitting right here in this chair when the killer walked in. He wouldn't tell where the briefcase was, so he got strangled, still sitting in the chair. Well, no wonder the killer couldn't find it if Zabo was roosting on it. You know, monsieur, this must be very valuable briefcase. Why we do not open and see what is in? Look, get your hands off it. But I was just curious. Save your curiosity. You see those government seals on the flap of it? They're still unbroken, and that's just the way they're going to stay. Your part of the job is finished, Anton. You can shove off. Anton, 
and shrugs and leaves. And I call Inspector Bravant and tell him I found Sabo's body. Then the next morning, I go to the American legation and look up our representative to the secret meeting, a guy named Robertson. And when Robertson spots the briefcase under my arm, his face lights up like a neon sign. Mitchell, you've certainly done us a tremendous service finding this briefcase. Well, I guess it's a good thing I didn't take any longer. That meeting is today, isn't it? Tonight at 10 o'clock. Excuse me, Mr. Robertson. Yes, Miss Miller. They just delivered your train ticket. Good, thank you. Yes, Mitchell, this briefcase will help our cause tremendously. Its disappearance stirred up so much suspicion that the very purpose of the meeting was in jeopardy. But now, when I deliver this briefcase to the Balkan representative tonight at 10 with the seal still unbroken, I think it'll clear the atmosphere quite a bit. Where's the meeting going to be? Uh, I'm sorry, Mitchell, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. You see, we've had indications that someone is out to sabotage the meeting, so we're taking no chances. We've changed the location twice, and now only the five representatives know what that location is. Well, that's probably the smart way to handle it. Anyway, it doesn't matter to me where the meeting is. You've got the briefcase, and my job is finished. Well, thanks again, Mitchell, and goodbye. I I must leave at once for the meeting. It's good to have my assignment completed. I'm patting myself on the back, telling myself how easy it's been when the easy feelings becomes a little uneasy. Somehow, it's been too easy. Call it a hunch or what have you. I begin to wonder if maybe I've been played for a sucker. I try to duck the thought, but the feeling sticks. I've got a few hours before the plain time, so I decide to do a little more checking. I remember the bartender at La Petite Chienne, the guy who lied to me about Sari not being in there. Bar's pretty deserted when I get there. Anton is over in one corner playing sweet music for the benefit of a young couple at a table. He gives me a big wink and a grin, but I head for the bartender. I tell him I've got a message for him from Sari Tadescu. He blinks a couple of times, but finally takes me to a back room. Now, uh, where is this message? Where's Sari? What? But you said you brought a message from her. You heard me. Where's Sari? This is a trick. Yeah, and it's going to work. Open up. Tell me where she is. I will not drink the knife. I will... Oh! That's better. Let go of me. Here. Try this wall for size. No! I, I, I will call for help. I doubt it. I don't think you want anyone to know you're a friend of Sarri. No! Now, look, you're going to keep bouncing off that wall until you tell me. No! I, I will not tell. This could go on all night. No! Stop. Stop. Stop it. Okay. I, where is she? Uh, uh, room 24, oh, oh, Bersh, Hotel. Thanks. You better get that wall fixed, Buster. Looks like we started a few cracks in the plaster. Barry. Who is it? A friend of yours. What do you want? I've got a message for you from the bartender at La Petite Chienne. Oh. oh. Hello, Sari. You are the one at the police station yesterday. You get your foot out of the door. I'm coming in. You get out of here. I, I will call the police. Are you kidding? What do you want? A lot of answers. But mainly, they boil down to this. Why did you kill Blake and Zabo? Zabo is dead. You ought to know, sister. Oh, oh, Zebo. Poor Zebo, he was, he was trying to help me. Help you? Look, you better start talking. We know you were on the same plane as Zebo, but yesterday at the police station you denied knowing him. Why? Zebo was, was trying to get me out of the country illegally. He got me a forged passport and he brought me to Paris with him. Wait a minute. You're not hooked up in this briefcase deal at all? Oh, no, no. When the plane landed, a little man met Zebo. He said he had come for the briefcase. The two of them went away together. But when Zebo did not return to the hotel, I became worried. And then when the police brought me in, I thought they had found out about my forged passport. So I denied knowing Zebo. I, I did not want to get him into any trouble. And you've been in hiding ever since, huh? Yes. Well, look. How does that bartender at La Petite Chien tie in? Well, Zebo had told me to go there if there was any trouble. Oh. That the, the bartender would tell me of a place where I could wait safely for the next stage of my journey. I, I guess that bar is a contact point for those with forged passports. And the bartender sent you here. 
I, I still don't see why you ducked out of that bar, though, in such a hurry. Uh, because I, as I was talking to the bartender, I, I suddenly saw the little man who had met Sabo at the place. What? This guy was in the bar? Yes, he was. You expecting anyone? No. Okay, I'm going to get over here behind the door. Oh. Now, go ahead and open it. All right. So we meet again, mademoiselle. No, 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 no. Do not try to slam door in my face. That's rude. I, I, I... Thank you. I have been trying unsuccessfully to locate you ever since you saw me leave airport with Zabo. But a man named Mitchell helped me. He softened up a bartender to a point where I could find out your address. <laughs> Don't you think this gun earns me invitation to come in? Yeah, come on in, Anthony. Mitchell. Yeah. Pull that trigger now and you'll blow your own foot off. Get that hand off my throat. Drop the gun or I'll break your arm. Very well, I drop it. I do not need gun. Constantina player develops strong hands, strong enough to strangle you. Yeah, just like you did Zabo, huh? But I don't think Constantina players know much about judo. Take a ride, Anton. His gun is right at your feet. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Watch out! He has a chair! Oh, let's see who gets the gun. Isn't that easy, Anton? Uh, knock him off balance. Yeah, here's another. Oh, the window! He cannot stop himself! Oh, no. There he is, in the middle of the courtyard. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> You still have not won, Mitchell. You have lost. Look, Anton, you wanted me to find Zabo's body. You led me right to it. You even lifted him up so I'd be sure to spot the briefcase. Of course. When briefcase is open, that secret meeting. Meeting will be over. I'm the prized chump of all time. You planted a bomb in that briefcase and got me to deliver it for you. Yes. <coughs> Oh, well. So long, Sari. I've got to find that guy, Robertson, in one big hurry. Yes? They gave me your address at the legation. You're Mr. Robertson's secretary, aren't you? Why, yes, Miss Miller. You're Steve Mitchell, the man who brought the briefcase to Mr. Robertson. Yeah, that's why I've got to find him right away. Where'd he go? Where's the meeting going to be? I'm sorry, Mr. Mitchell. I couldn't tell you even if I knew. Look, this is no time to be coy. There's a bomb in that briefcase. What? And it'll explode the second the briefcase is opened. Now, where's your boss, Robertson? His tickets were for Bordeaux. When does the train do to pull out? At six, I think. Oh, it's five minutes after now. Look, get your car. We'll try and overtake the train at the first stop. There's the train, Steve. We made it. Come on. Which compartment is Robertson in? His reservation was for compartment five. Here we are. Let me give you a hand. Thanks. Come on down the corridor. Here it is. Compartment five. Mr. Robertson, I... Hey, the compartment's empty. Empty? But... You're sure this is the right compartment? Of course. I got the reservation myself. What is it, monsieur? Uh, conductor, where's Mr. Robertson? Robertson? The guy who had this compartment. Why... Right. Oh, she did not stay on the train. What? No, it was very strange. He got aboard on one side, then he got off on the other. It took a taxi, I believe. Oh, great. Then the meeting's in Paris after all. Steve, what'll we do? It's 6.30. Three and a half hours to locate that meeting, and all we know is that it's somewhere in Paris. Oh, that taxi driver. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Come on, let's get back to town. You try and trace the cab, and I'll see what I can find out. <laughs> Why, no, Mitchell. None of us here at the Surete know where that meeting is to be held. Haven't you any idea at all, Inspector? Uh, Paris is a large city, Mitchell. I am sorry. You're sorry. Look, Commissioner, I've got to find that meeting. Do you know where it's to be? No, Steve. Why? Something wrong? You bet there's something wrong. There's a bomb on its way to that meeting. A bomb? How do you know? I sent it. What? Now, Steve. It's no joke, Commissioner. And if I don't locate it in the next three hours, there won't be any meeting. Steve, the taxi company says whoever picked up Mr. Robertson was on the day shift, and all those drivers are home by now. But there isn't time to telephone all of them and... Wait, 
The radio. What? The Paris radio station. Come on. No, 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 no. We cannot interrupt our programs just to broadcast Look, them. unless you do, there's going to be an explosion in Paris at 10 o'clock. An explosion? It'll probably blow up a city block. An explosion? You heard me. Now get on the air and tell any cab driver who picked up a man with a briefcase at the depot at 6 to call in here right away. Very well, monsieur. I will broadcast it immediately. <laughs> I can't stand this any longer. It's nine o'clock in one hour. All right, you got any ideas? Maybe we ought to broadcast a warning to the people of Paris. Tell them that there'll be an explosion somewhere in Paris in an hour, but we don't know where. Huh. You put an announcement like that on the air and you'll start the biggest stampede in history. Monsieur, monsieur, yeah. the cab driver's just called in. He remembers picking up a man with a briefcase at the depot. Where'd he take him? Here is the address. Thanks. Stay here, Marjorie. I'll see you later. <laughs> What do you want? Look, a taxi driver told me that he picked up a man with a briefcase and brought him here. What about it? Where is he? I am the man. What? <laughs> now, see, is a man to be allowed no privacy in this city? I got Oh, fine, it. fine. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm glad you called in, Steve. Look. That was the original wild goose chase. I know. Another cab driver just called in. The man he picked up answers Mr. Robertson's description. Where'd he take him? He led him off in front of the Louvois Hotel. You've got just 15 minutes before that meeting starts, Stephen. It'll take you 12 of them to get there. So, I break every traffic law in town and pull up at the hotel at six minutes to ten. The elevator operator thinks he remembers taking a guy with a briefcase up to the fourth floor... I get up there with three minutes to go and start walking down the hall. Then I spot a guy lounging at the end. And I've got a hunch I'm getting warm. He's probably a guard. I stop for a second in front of each door, but he doesn't react. Then I stop in front of the fifth door down. Suddenly he's on me like a blanket. What do you want? Look, I've got to get into that meeting. No one goes in that door. No one is going to... No. Sorry, I've got no time to argue. I gave the guard a fast frisk and got the key. I opened the door. It was a large suite, but in one of the rooms, I spot five men sitting around the table. One of them is Robert. <laughs> uh, the first order of business is this briefcase I'm turning over to the Balkan representative. I would like him to open it at once. I think it will clear the air considerably so that we can... Wait, don't open that briefcase. Mitchell, what are you doing? Don't open that briefcase. You, you, I'm talking to you. But that is the Balkan representative. He has every right to open it. Take your hands off it. Mitchell! Mitchell, are you crazy? Are you trying to start a war? There might have been one if I hadn't hit him. There's a bomb in that briefcase. What? Do you know what you're saying? You bet I know what I'm saying. Another second and you'd all have been blown sky high. Oh, brother, I didn't think I was going to make it here. Here, I'll take that briefcase now. Wait, where are you going? First, I'm going to turn this briefcase over to the surete, unopened, and let them worry about it from there. And second, well... I'm going to find me a good spot to have a nice, quiet, nervous breakdown. So long, Mr. Robertson. You've just heard another episode of Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell. Dangerous Assignment, written by Bob Reif, with music by Basil Adlin, is directed by Bill Carn. Be with us next week at this time, when Brian Donlevy, starring as Steve Mitchell, will embark on another Dangerous Assignment on NBC.